Hello there, and welcome to another video. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating a personal project that I've been working on for the last couple of months. The key objectives of the project was to learn more about the power of Kafka and as well as Docker containers. If I wanted to, if I had to describe the project or the context of the project in one sentence, it is to replicate a, 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 a quite an iconic scene in a, a competitive gaming league. Well, forever ado, before I go into the actual demonstration of the project, I wanted to demonstrate the architecture and present the, uh, the components in the application. So when it comes to the demonstration, hopefully the all of what I'm explaining here would make would fall into place nicely. So starting from the bottom of the diagram, we have our Blazor application. And the purpose of it is to, uh, to serve as a form with two pages, and we wanna get that form data and send it over to the Kafka broker. And as we can see in this screenshot, in this section here, we can see that our Kafka broker is hosted under Docker as a container. And as we can see, it also, it also has a dependency on Zookeeper. In order for the Blazor application to send a message over to the Kafka broker, we need to specify a topic. And a topic is a way to organize our messages into different categories. And in the context of my application, I needed two topics. One topic was for collecting the team, the, so the team data. So that'll be in the first page of the Blazor application. And then another topic to capture the, the player selection, the player data, more or less. And if we was to go to the top, we see we have a Node.js application, which is subscribing to messages from the Kafka broker. Now, similar to how the Blazor application has to specify a topic to produce messages to, the Node.js application has to specify that it wants to receive messages from these two topics. And in Kafka terms, the Blazor application is producing messages and the Node.js application is consuming messages. And then the final step is to send over this information from Kafka, from the Node.js application to the next JS application. So the next JS app, which is our front end application. And because I wanted to receive the data and render it in real time, this is where I utilized web sockets, which is used in real time applications, such as messaging systems and even app messages that, that like live stocks, getting live scores, don't, or any application, any other application that requires retrieving real-time data. And as we can see on the Node.js application, I had to create a WebSocket server, and I believe it was on port 3001. And then through using the socket, it will then transmit the data coming from the Kafka broker, and it will send it over to the next JS application, which is listening to that particular socket. One of the cool things about Kafka is the fact it is loosely coupled. What I mean by that is the Blazor, when the Blazor application produces messages to the Kafka broker, it has no idea if there are any other applications that are subscribing to receive these messages. And the same thing will go for the next Node.js application. When it's subscribing for messages sent from Kafka, it has no idea of the origin of these messages, who consumed these messages, so it has no idea that the applications are in fact generated by this Blazor application. One other thing worth noting, noticing is in the context of consuming and producing messages, uh, you, have, you can have multiple consumers uh, receiving these messages and multiple producers producing messages to a particular broker. That's also something that's quite powerful. One other thing that's also quite interesting that I've also recently learned is how messages can be retained Quite easily in Kafka compared to traditional messaging queues. Now I know in message queues you can 
configure it to retain over a certain period. But from my understanding, the ability to retain and configure how messages are retained in Kafka per topic is a lot much easier and configurable compared to traditional message queues. Um, without further ado, I would now like to go into the demonstration. So from the, from the bottom up, sorry, from the bottom, we can see we've got the Blazor application, which is this. And this is the first form. And because I said this message, so when I send this information, this is for the team. So what you're seeing here is in this drop down is all the teams uh, for, again, this is, again, because the street, this is a gaming uh, competitive to speak of these as gaming teams. So before I hit the submit button, I would like to, so when I do submit this, this will send, this would actually, this will serialize the form data and it will send it over to the Kafka broker and it will send it over to the team selection topic. Now the consumer, so AKA the Node.js application is going to receive that message and you'll see a log. So what I'm going to do is before I do that, I'm going to drag this to the, to my, to, to, uh, to my other screen. And I want to pay, I want you to pay attention to the, the logs. And this is, this is the consumer JS. So when I click, when I click the send button in the form, notice there'll be a log here. There we go. So we've got received message from Kafka and this is the broker. This is the uh, topic name. And here is the serialized data, which is coming from our web application. So which is coming from our Blazor application. And if I just go, if I just bring the screen back, back here. So here is the second form. And again, formatting on the fields. Yeah, it could definitely be improved. Maybe it's just a couple of front end changes, but the whole purpose of it is to capture the, the player data. So you got the player names, and then you also have their, the character they're going to be using. Cause again, this is Street Fighter, a player can select a single character. So these are the player names. These are the character names. So I'm just going to just randomly select some. So when I click on the second form, this will do the same thing of sending the data over to the, over to the Kafka broker, the consumer JS application will receive that, receive that data from the Kafka broker. And then finally it will send over this data to the Next.js application via a web socket. So instead of showing the consumer JS application, I'm now going to, again, so I'm going to drag this around, drag this on the other screen, and I would like to show the Next.js application. So when I hit the submit button on the, as you, you don't see, you should see the state, the text message here to say, receive the data from the host. Would you like to go in and review it? So when I click on the submit, as we can see, it received the next JS received the data from the consumer application via a web socket. And finally, when I click on yes, this would then this would then render all the data that came from the Kafka broker. And from what I explained from the beginning, you would see the player names, you will see character images, and you will see it displayed in a certain order. So again, all this data was uh, specified and mentioned in the Blazor application. So if I click on yes, you can see that you can see the players displayed in the, in the correct order. So on the right here, this is the player name, this is the character, and you see it's displayed for each row. And this is the iconic scene in Street Fighter in a nutshell. And again, if I was just to summarize all this information here, so the players, the players here, these players here, all of this information originated from the Blazor application. The Blazor application sent these information to the, to the Kafka topic. If I just want to explain this a bit further. So in the bottom left, this data came from the Kafka topic team called team selection. So the purpose of that is just to get the teams, the team names, that's all there is to it. And then the data on the right, which is again, which you saw in the second form, you got the player name and the character selected. 
all this information that is serialized from the Blaze application to the Kafka, that is being sent to another topic called player selection. And with these two Kafka topics being sent from the consumer application over to the front end application, which is the, the Next.js application, and doing that in real time. So again, I didn't have to refresh this page at all to receive the data. Because I was using WebSockets, I was receiving these, these uh, receiving the data in real time. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.